When you're done with the pinch rollers and the capstan drives, and it may take a fair amount of scrubbing before you reach that point where you're ready to move on, but when you are ready to move on, it's time to go after the heads. Now the head in this case is that round object in the middle with the uh, black thing sitting right next to it. In this case, this is an auto reversing deck and the head actually spins around in this mechanism so that it can flip over and play two tracks or the other set of two tracks from the other side of the tape. There's four tracks total on a compact cassette and two are played at any given time to give you a left channel and a right channel on a stereo recording. So that's why the head flips over. But if you have something simpler like this Technics deck down here, which is just an auto stop transport, you can see that there is just one stationary head, one capstan drive, and one pinch roller. So what you have to do varies a little bit depending on what you've got. But in any case, be very, very careful with the playback, erase, and recording heads in your machine because if you mess them up, the damage will probably be more to, uh, it'll cost more to repair it than it will to simply get a new machine in all but the most special cases. So when you go to clean the heads, just be careful and go slow and don't get too rambunctious with them, especially if they're mounted like these are on a mechanism where they can revolve. Another good reason not to mess with these too much is that you can knock the machine out of alignment and then you'll have problems with crosstalk and things like that between channels. And here I am getting ready to go after the heads in this machine. Now this particular machine is a two-head machine. There's one head for playback and recording, that's the silver one, and then the smaller head over here is actually an erasing head. Now on cheaper decks and many portables, the erasure head has oftentimes been replaced by a simple permanent magnet that just swivels out whenever the recording mode is selected. But all better quality decks typically have an actual erase head that is driven with an AC biasing signal to erase the tape before it heads across the recording head. Now if you've got a really fancy deck, it's probably got three heads on it. One of which is a recording head, one of which is a playback head, and one of which is an erasure head. But this and many machines out there are just two head machines and one head does everything. The, the usefulness of the third head is to actually monitor what's going down on your tape as it's being recorded. You can monitor the uh, recording activity of almost any deck by plugging in a set of headphones to the headphone plug here on the front, but in a two head machine all you're going to be hearing is um, the signal that's going out to the head. You won't actually hear what's being put on the tape so you can't hear if there's a quality problem with your tape or if the bias needs to be adjusted or something like that. Anyway, the name of the game here is to be careful. Don't get too, uh, don't get too rambunctious with these. Just gently kind of scrub them. The idea is that the head should be a shiny reflective color. There should be a black spot in the middle of it or some kind of a colored spot. That's actually the magnetic pickup. Now in, a, in a deck like this, this is an auto-reversing deck, and so the head will actually flip around, as I probably talked about a moment ago in the last segment. The head flips around because only two tracks out of the total four on a compact cassette are played at any time in a normal cassette deck. Some special devices use all four tracks, such as uh, special book reading, uh, book on tape machines for the blind, certain stuff for musicians and stuff like that might actually use all four tracks once or treat all four tracks separately, but that's not the case with a deck like this. You can see I'm just kind of gently scrubbing the head here and there's a little bit of grime coming off there. You can't tell because this this uh, light is overloading my camera a little bit. But I'll go back in here with the other end of this cotton swab and I'll just gently start scrubbing the erasure head. Now you want to make sure there's tape guides and stuff mounted to these heads and you want to make sure that you don't break them off, bend, distort, or damage them in any way because then you may really have problems including a deck that eats tapes. Oh, and that's one more thing I want to talk about while I'm on this subject. When you're done cleaning your deck, allow ample time for everything to dry. If you do not allow the pinch rollers, capstan drives, and the heads, and every other part of the tape transport to dry out, you will have oodles and gobs of tape that get eaten inside the deck and they will go to places where no tape should ever tread. So definitely don't hurry this. This is also a good reason to use the highest percentage of isopropyl alcohol you can find because it will it will dry faster. Now just let, uh, let convection do its thing here. Don't try to hasten the process with a fan because you may blow 
a whole bunch of dust and crap into your deck. When you're finished cleaning and you're satisfied that you've gotten everything cleaned up really, really well inside there, you're ready to do your demagnetizing if it's time to do that. Now with the demagnetizer, what you want to do is you want to make sure you have plenty of room to roam with this thing. You actually may want to get an extension cord. I'm going to put this way back as far away as my arm can reach, and then I'm going to turn it on. Now keep in mind again that the duty cycle of these things is limited. You leave them on too long and they may well burn up, so don't do that. But I'm going to turn the demagnetizer on right now, again making sure that I've gotten all my tapes and magnetic valuables out of the way because this thing could wreck them. And I'm going to turn this on and bring it in very, very slowly into the deck. And I'm going to make sure to keep it turned on at all times. If you move too fast or you shut this thing off or it loses power, you may well end up freezing an even stronger unwanted magnetic field into your deck's capstan drives and playback and recording heads. You can see I'm just kind of gently moving it back here, not quite letting them touch the, not quite letting the tip of the demagnetizer touch the heads, but getting close and just slowly moving it back and forth. I'm going to do that two or three more times. And then when I'm done, I'll leave it turned on and I'll go ahead and slowly take it away until I'm a couple feet away from the deck and when I'm done then I can go ahead and turn it off and so now you have taken care of your cassette decks regular maintenance needs you've cleaned the tape transport and you've demagnetized it as well so let everything dry out give everything another good couple of minutes to go ahead and dry out and then get your tape and try it out. Now, if your machine was really overdue for a cleaning, you're going to notice that the high end of your audio will have returned and everything is going to sound a lot better than it did. If you were just doing this because it was time, you probably won't notice as profound a difference. I've actually prepared a demonstration tape recorded on the Technics deck down here, and the more, uh, the more observant amongst you will notice that the left and right levels are not quite identical. I don't know why that is, but both of my decks like this do the same thing. I played it on the Sony into the computer and recorded it before I cleaned and demagnetized the heads. And now I'm going to play it into the computer again and you can see if you notice any difference. You're listening to All Things Considered from NPR News. In this week's Environmental Almanac, Rob Cantor encourages you to let spring migration awaken your inner birder. The weather last Wednesday morning argued against out... You're listening to All Things Considered from NPR News. In this week's Environmental Almanac, Rob Cantor encourages you to let spring migration awaken your inner birder. The weather last Wednesday morning argued against out...